All right, next one. So we've covered, the th there's three homologies, right, we're trying to go over, and they're all related using the order of that these actually scientific terms um, were developed, okay? So this one is Miller-Urey experiment. Um, he's actually 1940s, 1950s, uh, post-World War II, um, and so his experiment was they attempted to create the atmospheric conditions, um, the theoretical atmospheric conditions. They didn't actually know what they were. Nobody was there, right? Um, and so we've gone from over anatomical homologies, embryonic homologies, and we now we're going to be covering molecular on the molecule level, not just the genetic level, but on the biomolecule level, where these different biomolecules have to come from. Okay. So um, this is actually important. It's actually put forward by one of, one of Hackle's point, points that um, that so the first living thing has to come from rock soup, okay? Pri the primordial soup is what they call it, okay? Um, all right, so let's talk about it. Okay, so know your experiment. All right, so their theory was, okay, we're going to do atmosphere, all right, and we're going to um, recreate the other atmospheric conditions, um, and so there's still going to be a water cycle, right? Okay, so what are the three parts of the water cycle? You have evaporation, condensation, precipitation, right? So we're going to take a pot of water, they boil it, it would evaporate, cause water vapor, right? They'd add some other gases such as methane, ammonia, and, and hydrogen gas, okay? And then they would send it through this electrode, they would shock it, and it ran nonstop. And actually this experiment ran for a long period of time and it was still running in some cases, okay? They ran it, then they put it through a condenser, okay? Okay, and then it, they would actually periodically draw samples out, okay? From both regions, all right? Um, so what happened? What did we, what actually so they ended up being able, for this first version of the experiment, people have done different versions of the experiment, um, and the numbers have changed a little bit and what they've been able to do, and we'll talk about that. But the first version of the experiment, they were able to produce five amino acids, only three of which are the 22 amino acids needed for living organisms. So you have to remember that there are, um, it being a molecule, there are several different forms of amino acids, um, upwards to 40 to 50 different amino acids that, that, that we've discovered. Um, but Pretty much the rule of thumb is uh, there are 22 distinct um, amino acids for all living organisms on Earth. Um, there may be, you know, an, an organism that has an extra one here or there. Um, it just depends, but it's very rare, hard to hard to uh, determine. Um, so what's the issue here is even with the further developments, they've only been able to produce 11 of the 22 amino acids. Okay. Um, and then the other issue is that as soon as they're exposed to the environment, they oxidize and break down. Okay, so we have to remember um, that, uh, that remember what proteins are, right? So you have your four biomolecules. You have carbohydrates, you have lipids, you have amino acids, and nucleic acids. Okay, so their experiment produced amino acids, not the other carbohydrate, not carbohydrates, not lipids, and not nucleic acids. Okay, and then on top of that. What are amino acids, right? We take single amino acids and in neat combinations, just like words in a book, right? If I'm gonna write a sentence, I gotta use distinct words to make a distinct meaning, otherwise it's random crap, okay? Excuse my language. All right, and so then I put them together, that's a terrible chain. And then I would link all these amino acids together to make one chain, fold it up, that would make a protein, and that protein would do some function, correct? Okay, so remember, none of those amino acids discovered were ever in chains, all right? Um, they weren't complex compounds, they didn't do any functions, they were just amino acids. All right, and so back to primordial soup, right? Hackle's like, spontaneous generation has to be true. Um, straightforward, his deal was, and this is a quote from Hackle, otherwise it would mean, it would be necessary to believe in a creator, okay? Um, you know, it just shows his biases. All right, so issues with the Miller-Urey experiment, right? Um, Louis Pasteur, okay, was a contemporary of Hackle, um, predates Miller-Urey, right? Um, but this is what he put forward. There was um, he's he's well known for um, principles of vaccination. The reason we have vaccinations nowadays. Um, he was one of the early people who started the vaccination processes, microbial fermentation, um, and which is a process where you use microbes, right, living organisms, to make like vinegar and other pickled goods um, that change the atmosphere, change the process to the point where um, cheese, um, buttermilk. Anyways. Um, 
and, and pasteurize. And, it, and it, I mean, there's a process that people have been doing for a long time, but he actually discovered how and what happens and, and how it makes the food safe to eat and consume. Uh, yogurt would be another example. Um, and then also pasteurization, okay, who carries this name, Pasteur, pasteurization, pasteurization, okay. Um, and what this is, is so like any canned goods y'all buy, so whether it's a um, coffee can or like, I know nowadays most people don't do it anymore because it's a pain in the butt, but um, uh, if you're canning vegetables or canning fruit, making jelly, you would pasteurize that. And so you you take your vegetables, you'd shove them in a glass can, you put a lid on there, or you put some kind of broth in there, um, sometimes vinegar and sometimes just water with sugar or whatever, some some sort of broth in there, fill up all the empty space, put the lid on the can, put that can in a, in a pot of hot water, of boiling hot water and just boil the snot out of that stuff and what that would do is it raised the temperature and the pressure inside the can and all the microbes would gradually die and kill off all the microbes and make the food shelf stable and so as long as the, that can or it didn't break down or rust out or any air or anything get inside that can after it's been um, pasteurized it'd be theoretically be um, shelf stable until it, until the can died until it broke down all right um, okay um, we also do it with milk, not in that sense. Um, uh, there's a process by which we heat and clean, clear, um, heat, heat up milk, cook the milk. Um, there's low temp, um, longer time pasteurization, and there's high temp, short time. Um, it's just a combination of time, pressure, and heat um, that makes up how long something has to be pasteurized. And of course, your milk is not self stable. Don't take Mr. Drooper said it's, it's been pasteurized, which it has been, but it's not the same as what you do in a coffee can or canned goods, okay? Um, and it will gradually go bad, right? Um, okay, many of his discoveries saved many, many lives, okay, and still do. There are still practices that we put forth. Um, uh, Pastor really took part in some science that uh, makes a difference in people's lives um, and continues. And, and he, of all the scientists we've talked about, he's, he's the greatest, okay? Um, so he also, because through his pasteurization experiment, um, disproved abiogenesis. So what is that? okay? Um, and so it's a spontaneous um, development of living organisms um, from organic compounds. So it's where yeah. So so go back to Miller Urey. Um, go watch the video. Come back. There's a second video that's optional to watch, but it'll kind of explain more and give you a little bit more principles and in depth on how. Go ahead and go and watch the videos and come back. Okay, so, so let's talk, let's go back to Miller Urey and how this works. So let's give it to him. Let's say, okay, Miller, you're able to remake um, all the biomolecules, all the carbohydrates, all the lipids, all the amino acids, and all the nucleic acids, right? We'll just, and so, and say, give it to him. Say, you know what, you can do that in the lab. We can make rock soup into organic molecules, okay? All the ones we need for life, okay? And so, this is where Pasteur's experiment takes place, okay? So you have broth, okay? It's made from organic compounds, made from animals, okay? Whether you have chicken broth or beef broth, it doesn't matter. Um, and, and it'll have all, including water, it, it has all the organic molecules you need for life, right? It has all four biomolecules in there um, in abundance and all you need, okay? So um, what Miller, what uh, Pasteur did is he heated it, cooked it off, kill off all the bacteria, right? You already know this, okay? What didn't happen? Life did not spontaneously generate, okay? Um, there's been versions of this experiment adapting both Miller-Urey and Pasteur, and it still doesn't work. Um, we've yet to see new organism growth, a single-celled organism spontaneously generate from, uh, from nothing, okay? Um, doesn't work. Okay. Um, so even cell theory, right? That's, that's a part of a form of cell theory that, that all the living cells come from another cell except for the first cell. So, uh, you know, and cell theory doesn't claim to have a first cell, okay? So yeah, it, it's, it's really kind of a hamper onto it, you know? And uh, yeah, so at this point we finish your outline. Um, you know, we'll end it here. Um, Maybe we'll come back and talk about um, the transitional species for human beings, the missing links, and uh, how every one of them been brought forth have been disproven by the scientific community, by other evolutionary biologists. But anyways, 
So I hope to see you all when I get back. I um, hope you all have a good weekend and um, have a good Monday and Tuesday without me. All right. Take care, guys.